This podcast is brought to you by Three Candy, Candy Associates. Associates. Looking for your first matrimonial house? Planning to upgrade? Look no further. For your property matters, contact Three Candy Associates at eight three eight sorry eight seven eight eight three five five nine. And you can follow them on Instagram at Three Candy dot Associates. Three Candy selling solutions, not, not promises. promises. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Outside It with your host Yanto, Farah, and Ustazah Hidayah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to start us for honest conversations about relationships and marriage. So if you are ready, let's go. go. Yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah, we are so happy to yes, yes. have Ustazah Hidayah yes. back again. Yes, Alhamdulillah, thank you for having me. For another episode. Yes. yes, we are happy to have her. And mm-hmm. also today, I think we need her lah. Mm-hmm. Because yes. the guests that uh, we have here today, the punya story quite uh, heavy and I don't um, some of the things I don't think we can handle it ourselves mm-hmm. and especially I feel like the punya experience ni uh, the intention for for us for this episode is to help her also lah because she has some questions mm-hmm. pertaining to religion, and, religion, religion uh, and uh. also um, some things pertaining to her future in, mm-hmm. term, in marriage in and marriage, things yes. like that so yeah. inshallah with this episode uh, she can have some answers Um, she can have some answers and also maybe a new perspective lah. Mm, inshallah. To go home with. And also at the same time also kalau for example if there's any others yang you know facing the same situation as this mm-hmm. hopefully this episode will be able to guide you as well. Yeah. Inshallah uh, yeah. with whatever that we can bring forth for yes. this episode lah. Inshallah. And also before we introduce Raina mm. tanya Ustaz Zaida ya. Mm. Apa dia? The previous episode kan kita buat pasal diaper kan. Yeah. I dengar-dengar you kena chuck diaper kat sini. <laughs> <laughs> Betul, mana-mana yang pergi cakap, eh, I nak berbual pasal diaper tu. Macam, ya Allah, ya Allah. Yeah. InsyaAllah, insyaAllah. Because of the episode also, we have quite a few of our kenalan also, eh, coming up to us, com- coming up to us and mm. say, eh, the diaper story, ah, that one real lah, real lah, real. Mm. That yeah. is a real submission. Yeah, so yeah. of course, um, our guest for today also um, submitted their story. Betul, betul, betul. betul. Kan, okay, submitted the story and yes. then um, we, from the story, we, went further because I feel that you know we feel to just share it on on the podcast as a story by mm. itself the punya, it doesn't have the depth mm-hmm. of you know the understanding of what is, uh, what she is going through yeah uh, uh, siapakah guess kita pada guess hari ini namanya bukan nama sebenar mm. tapi welcome to outside in honey honey hello assalamualaikum <laughs> Hello. 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 <laughs> My name is Hani. Yes, hi Hani. Thank you so much for mm. coming, uh, for being willing to come to Outside In yes. to share your story and also uh, with the intention of uh, memperbaiki diri and also uh, yeah. dari iktibar untuk kepada kita punya pendengar juga lah, mm. insyaAllah. Hani, you do you listen to Outside In? Yes. 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 <laughs> Insider. <laughs> From the beginning. Yeah. Wah, Alhamdulillah. 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 Tapi suara pun kita dah berubah suai. Mm-mm. Jadi, uh, this is not the actual voice. Yes. Kita kita aja yang tahu dia punya actual voice. So, <laughs> korang tak tahu. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, one of the things that you mentioned was domestic violence. Yeah, um, the ones that involve is just me and my mom. Okay. okay. That's been affected. Oh. Right. Uh, I have a sibling, mm-hmm. but he's uh, he have never faced domestic violence. Ah. Right. Mm-hmm. Kira kan dia anak buah lah. So. Uh, yeah, he's like the youngest. So mm-hmm. um, up till now, he have never faced. Domestic right. violence. Yeah. Okay, domestic okay. violence ni from who? From okay. my father. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So the victims of this is your mum and yourself. Yes. Okay. Maybe you can share with us a little bit more about how um, you know from when, from what age were you um, exposed to this? Yeah, did it start uh, Violence. I think around maybe when I was an infant, because he, I remember that time he bragged about it, oh. about punching me because I touched his. Uh, speaker like he's very particular about that okay. and then I was playing around with it when I was three years old so mm. I suspect it happened way before that also lah when mm. you were younger lah yeah sampai sekarang ah uh, no it stopped oh, okay. it stopped when I confronted um, maybe during the early secondary school days mm-hmm. so around 13 to 14 years old so ada lah there's this big argument at, uh, between me and my dad then um, dia dah nak nak dekat pukul lah hmm. And then I said um, uh, Pergi lah pukul kakak I'm your daughter you know You still want to Punch my face You punch my face right now hmm. Wow And then from there Ever since then When he's angry right He have never Stepped foot in my room oh. Because he just realised that Oh anak aku dah besar He can uh, She can finally think right. Properly yeah. But I do want to Comment that lah 
Mm. Like I can only imagine it takes a lot out of a person to actually yeah, I had stand enough. up. Mm. Yeah, thirteen, mm. fourteen years old, right? It's thirteen, young. fourteen years old yeah. because um, the types of things that he, the types of objects that he used Object. to hit me, right, mm. is quite severe. Like um, that time when I was in primary school, he, I dodged a vacuum. Like he flew a vacuum over my head. Just Ooh. because I bring a friend over after my primary school class. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then there were times where we we would have to replace toilet plastic doors because he would just bash in the toilet because uh, I didn't... Okay, sorry, it's like very triggering. Okay, it's okay. Like the reason why the domestic violence started, right, is because he's a uh, young father. La. He's a young mm. father, okay. Yeah, and also that time when he smashed the toilet door is because I showered a bit later than him mm-hmm. and he disliked that. I think listening to you and yeah, like your voice and everything, right? Uh, I can see how it has affected you lah, emotionally mm. also. What what was picturing inside your mind? Can you walk us through the the damage that it has done to you? Wow. I had flashbacks of him beating me with the with the shower head. Oof. Yeah, and it's really painful because I was naked and like I was just a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they check up, like, "Asa ka belum mandi?" Then he just had to hit me with the shower head, and you can just imagine lah how many times we had to replace the toilet door because mm. of him bashing through. Yeah. yeah, it's really like. Um, I feel I felt helpless lah at that point of time mm. when I was a kid. I'm a sick of cheek, mm. mm. And the reason why it's like triggering to me now because I really didn't manage to have that closure, and mm. I still live with him. Oh. Wow. So still in the same house with him. Mm, also. The fact that I have to tell Lan this for so long, yeah, um, it's quite hard lah for uh-huh. me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ooh. I cannot. I cannot. Yeah. I cannot. Mm. Yeah, because it's. I have I have had my fair share of disciplining, but what um, Honey has shared that I I I feel like it has crossed the line of disciplining. That is like abuse, lah. Mm. And I mean, to you are showing your your anger through violence in a sense, mm-hmm. and then you know, um, we 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 all go through emotions, mm-hmm. uh, anger. Hatred, sadness, mm-hmm. things like that is how we control our emotions as human beings. To mm-hmm. especially to darag in diri kau, right? And then for someone to, you know, just bash the shower head because he's not happy with you showering late and things mm-hmm. like that. That is really the trigger. We call it trigger happy. Trigger Tr- happy. Trigger happy. Uh, where you know you feel angry, mm, right? Mm-hmm. So I feel that that in a sense, um, of course, we do not condone um, yeah, violence. This is something that we should never turn to, mm-hmm. especially um, if you have anger issues. We hope that you realize that you have anger issues, and you do something about it. Yeah, yeah. and I feel like just now, bila Hani cakap, she doesn't have that closure. Can what 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 can you advise Ustaza for her to, in terms of psychological, in terms of religion, of how to forgive? You know, our own um, parents doing something to this extent. Is there mm. any way that she can, you know, find some peace find inside her hand? Yeah. Mm, probably I can ask you first. How mm. have you been trying to find that that peace? Because you are still in the same household, and yeah. then you said that many years you telan this this is journey, right? This this experience. What has been helpful for you so far? In my early young adult years, right? It's not really that I want to find peace, but I distracted myself with a lot of. Uh, bad influence lah. Mm. Okay. Um, it can be drinking or clubbing. Mm. Lately, after that, the rasa macam how to say sick and tired of that lifestyle. So mm-hmm. I really wanted to find a change and uh, rapakan iman lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I have to really give credits to my nene because uh, my nene is the one who helped me push through and also my uncle. Mm. Yeah. Through your macam hijrah journey lah. Yeah, before mm-hmm. I moved to a new house because okay. right. I was living with them. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. So throughout yeah. the times you were staying with them, did you ever like jump share with them? You no, know, like oh my father beat me in the shower, my father jump out vacuum and things like that. No, the reason why I didn't share with them because they knew. Oh, they yeah. saw they were there. They knew that he's violent okay. and he's aggressive. Oh. And actually, I want to add on like 
um, about the shower head, right? Mm. That's not the most traumatic uh, experience that I've ever had. Mm. Uh, there's another one that I can vividly remember. Uh, and it started when I was like uh, primary school. I was fighting with my adik in the room. Lah, and then he got so pissed off. Oh, by the way, for context, it's just me, my adik and my dad in mm. the house. Okay. So that's, he's the only grown adult in the house. Mm. Then he... Uh, he really had it. He can't stand the noise of me fighting with my dad. So what he did was he uh, went to the master bedroom because that's where we were at. Mm-hmm. Uh, he dragged my hair. Oh. He grabbed my hair. He dragged all the way from the master bedroom to the living room sofa. And he started threatening me with knife mm. and frying pan also. Like, you know, like, if I bawa frying pan, if I bawa knife, Jangan tahu sampai aku macam gitu. Mm. Yeah, I just say no, no, daddy, I don't want. Yeah, and then he just like, "Abi kau diam, kau diam je lah." Mm. Yeah, that's just like the tip of the iceberg. Stop mm. I mean, like, I can when when I think of this story, can I think a part of me is is very grateful that my own family is you know loving. And brought mm. me up in the most affection and love. But you know, there are actually people out there who are experiencing you know, families as such. Sometimes they don't have a voice. Yeah. The victims don't have a voice. They don't know how to come out of it. They don't know how to seek help. Mm. And then you know, um, like what Honey mentioned earlier mm. on, she has been keeping it to herself for so long, mm. right? Mm. And and I think the most important thing that we need to understand is that. There are actually options outside of you know when 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 you face certain abuse, a certain certain um, violence in the family household. Mm-hmm. There there are there, there are things that we mm-hmm. can do. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so definitely there are, there are helplines for those who might be struggling something similar, right? Mm-hmm. Helplines for violence, helplines for um, you know abuse that is happening in mm-hmm. the home. So mm-hmm. um, all these resources are there. It's just that sometimes we are not aware of it, yeah. Yeah. or sometimes we can be aware of it, but we don't know if it is the right time mm. or yeah. what are the repercussions yeah. to our family, to yeah. our parents, right? Yeah. When, uh, when, when that thing happens, lah. Um, but you know, I just want to touch on Tari Farah asked about closure, about forgiveness, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and especially hearing from Hani herself sharing this and that you are still in this household. I don't think forgiveness should be our conversation. Lah. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. think forgiveness should be somewhere that you are headed to because you are still in this in this process, right? In this journey. Mm. And interestingly, um, in Islam, forgiveness is not an obligation. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Forgiveness is not an obligation. It's, it's, it's a choice. Mm. Oh. And um, even during the time of the Prophet Sallam when um, certain things were done to the wives of the Prophet. If, if, if you know Aisha, mm-hmm. Aisha Radulullah Aisha. So she's one of the wives of Rasulullah uh, So she was slandered. She was um, treated unfairly by the people because of her slander. Lah. Um, and it, it did not affect only her. It also affected her father. Mm-hmm. Because the one who caused the slander is her own cousin. Okay. So her own cousin, young her father, has been like um, showering him with all of the money, all of the things that he needs to live a life to pursue his business. Mm-hmm. So um, when he said that, you know, I want to cut off ties with this person, I want to no longer sponsor the livelihood of this person, um, in Surah An-Nur, Allah actually revealed verses asking Abu Bakr, do you not want to forgive him? But oh. it was just a question for Abu Bakr to reflect. And of course, for me, when I take a look at reflections in the Quran, it's always when you are ready. It's always when you feel like you have um, worked on what you need within you, mm-hmm. then you move forward with the forgiveness. So mm-hmm. I think sometimes, you know, as Muslims, we feel like I'm so bogged down. Like I'm, I just have to do every single day if I don't forgive. Like mm-hmm. I want to be a better person, but I cannot forgive what this person had done for me. Mm-hmm. But um, it's important to know that it is not an obligation. But definitely, it is something that um, we can think about or consider in the near future. Lah, what is right. important mm-hmm. is to um, address, yeah, address what's inside of you to mm. heal, to literally just walk through this journey that you are still going mm. through, lah, right? Yeah. Because we're not talking about things in the past. You are still mm-hmm. facing your father. You are still yes. facing the people in your household, and yeah. I cannot imagine it is it's so difficult to be in your position, and it's mm-hmm. really easy for people to just say. 
ah tak apalah maafkanlah you know mm-hmm. just have closure you know you can dah besar mm-hmm. you can can manage on your own yeah. but um, as Yanto mentioned earlier right there are damages there are there are effects oh can yeah. you imagine mm. I have to kneel down during Hari Raya nak kena seek forgiveness oh, right the pain wow. oh, I had to fake right. my apology towards my mom and my dad mm. wow. in my thought process I'm just thinking like Aku kena minta maaf ke? Mm-hmm. Because it's not my fault to be born this way but yet right. I still feel um, the mm-hmm. need to apologize to them because mm-hmm. of the because raya, 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 yeah. Yeah. Raya, batin things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah. I I do have a question for for Hani. Um mm. after what Uzaza mentioned just now, throughout these years of you know because you mentioned it stopped at um, when you were 14 13 around those age, right? So there were a few years that went on. How then do you face your father at home? Like, do you have conversations with him, or do you like you know hmm. um, try to? Do, do you even have a relationship with your father? It's a very complicating relationship. Okay. Some days there would be like happy days. He would be even willing to bring us out to go to playgrounds. Okay. And buy us ice cream, bring us to swimming pools. You know, have some ven- family bonding sessions. Okay. But. Once he's angry, he's a different person. Mm. Okay. So it's like a love-hate relationship until now. Until I now. do love him, but I hate him at the same time for causing so much pain towards me. Mm. Mm. It's really confusing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like at one point, like, hey, this person I love so much, and then suddenly this person I hate yeah. because of the things mm. that he had done, right? Yeah. Mm. As a child, those years are the foundation years mm. of yeah. them growing up. It creates you know, core memories and things like that. So hers, it was filled with violence. You know, a lot abuse. of pain and abuse. Mm. So growing up, you tend to feel, uh, have like these flashbacks once in a while whenever he gets angry, mm-hmm. even till today. Yeah, that, um, that time we watched Surya, there's this one episode in Surya, mm. it's mm. like... Um, bringing awareness of domestic violence okay. and then he was like wah teruk eh si budak ni kena bantai oh. and then I'm just in my mind like kau buat kat aku si mm. then yeah. you want to have sympathy towards towards these kids but you never even apologize to my face mm. it's so geram then mm. every time when this topic occur right I would just I just isolate in my room uh. that's how it's been wow Wow, but okay, this this is not the only thing that uh, Honey is facing right now, right? Mm-hmm. So, so that is the you know the abuse that has come from um, her father until the age of thirteen and fourteen. But you know, still lingering effects uh, that is still causing Honey some emotional uh, responses and trauma. this distress trauma. But also, you shared that um, your mother pula. Yeah, can you share a little bit about your situation with your mother? Um, throughout my life, she has been really absent because uh, she works overtime every single day. Mm. Like there will be off days, but uh, she has to work overtime because she's she's the breadwinner of the house. Okay. okay. Yeah, she has been working really hard, uh, and I am really grateful for that. But also at the same time, there's cons lah because she's very absent uh, mm-hmm. and I will be alone in the house during primary school days yeah okay. mm. um, just for context also I've been thrown around to many caregivers like uh, they are friends or relatives oh, okay uh, mm. basically provided for you for your for your family yep. to survive uh, in this day and age mm-hmm. yes. for you growing up and all that and then um, you mentioned earlier also that you know your she's absent so mm-hmm. do you crave For her attention, like do you want? Like, I want my mom. I want my mom. A lot. There were times where I would hug her, and oh, this was my favorite moment, because I remember that time when she was going to work, right? And this was during like my teenage years, mm. and uh, I love this part when before she go to work, she kiss on my cheek, and her lipstick was on my cheek. Mm. The whole day I would just leave it there because why? Well, I can't even remember the last time she kissed on my cheek. Yeah, that's how rare it is for for me to see her at home. Mm. Oh my god, I, I cannot. <sighs> like she, before she leave for work, she she said, "Uh, mami nak pergi kerja dulu. Uh, makan okay, macam gitu. Abi mm. dicium kat uh, pipi saya lah." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think you guys can see, but uh, Hani punya eyes is like glistening with tears mm. right now. And yeah. oh my god, I, I tengok apa yang cina nangis. <laughs> oh, my eye. Being close with my mom also, I, I I understand the you know the the bond that you have with your mother is something else, nah. But it seems like macam the the way you talk about your mom, right? You have a lot of admiration and love for her, mm. even though she has been absent. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a reason why? 
I think because I can see how much effort she put into this family, mm. despite the mental abuse that she has been given towards me. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. You might be wondering what kind of mental yeah. abuse, but uh, she's quite narcissistic. Okay. So whenever it comes to like arguments, she would push the blame on me. Mm. Okay. Um, Is it something that we say? Nina, semua kau ni pasal. Ah, self-centered. Okay. And whenever I'm trying to to open up or like confront to her. Mm-hmm. Um, she couldn't accept it and she would still turn the blame on me. Okay. Uh, something like that. Mm-hmm. Selling solutions, not promises. Hi, I'm Ira from Srikandi Associates. This one is for first-time buyers. It's best to do your research, financial calculations and apply for your HFE letter before you start shopping on the various property portals. This way, you will avoid the disappointment of losing out on units you have seen and liked because you're not ready to make a purchase. To know more, you can contact us at Srikandi Associates at 8788-3559. Of course, also you mentioned that you know there are things that she, she does for the family that somehow puts you into question about whether or not you know things are things are okay for the family because of mm. a certain working environment that your mom is in mm-hmm. yeah, maybe maybe we can share a bit more about that okay she have been working in a non halal restaurant so mm-hmm. to be exact uh, there's alcohol and pork in the restaurant okay. Okay. and even though like i i do love her but something about her that i dislike would be being an alcoholic mother okay Yeah. Mm. So whenever she stressed, she would just take the bus and try to clear her problems away by doing that. Yeah. But has she been much um under the influence in the house itself with you around? Yes. Oh. Um during my young okay. young age like when I was primary school around mm. there, I would find bus at the back of the closet. Mm. Oh. Uh, I don't know whether it's from my dad or my mom but uh uh-huh. Yelah, bila yeah, nak cari like baju ke apa Then I suddenly found like shorts, glasses and like uh, Wines mm. yeah. Wow, okay But um, it's quite active till now lah She's, she's still, still drinking and it's obviously mm. affecting the whole house Right mm. Maybe you can share with me a little bit more about How is the whole environment at home Whenever you know your mom is intoxicated and things like that Well, it's really bad if like I kena pukul dari bapa kan Then after that, my mom come home being drunk, mm. so she would start blaming me. the The worst one I've I've heard was like, "Oh, I've never wanted you oh, in my life." Mm. But the recent one was quite uh, chaotic also, because I feel like she couldn't take the the exhaustion from work, mm. okay. and she have no one to vent to because um, her husband, which is my father, is quite neglect neglectful when it comes to emotions. Mm. Okay. Uh, so she have no one to vent. Then me and my Adi also out of the house most of the time. So that day was, um, she couldn't take it. She throw the plate of pasta against the wall. Mm. Uh, it shattered into pieces. The plate, mm. okay. Mm. And then okay. from there, she just like couldn't take it. And my dad also cannot take her. Uh, so to the anger management, yeah. then now this thing happening. So mm. it became a whole uh, permanent records around the house lah. Um, during that day, he also say like, um, dah berapa lama sih? Ever since kakak was born, you still drink, you know, until now. Till when you want to stop this? Mm. Mm, when you want to stop? Uh, then she asked, uh, the both of us ah, it's just me, my dad, and my mom in the house. Mm. She asked the both of us, um, ada tak mummy create any problems in the house when I'm drinking? No, right? I drink uh-huh. outside for a reason. Then okay. she asked me, she look at me, I got create not. Then I'm at that point of time. I don't know how to jawab. I just like stood there in silence. I just wanted to be there for her, but I don't know how. Mm. Right. Wah, wow. and then she say like, "Never mind lah. I don't want to ask you. Adik is more wiser lah." Mm. Oh, macam tu lah. Oh, she has a favoritism towards my adik. I don't know why. Despite everything that has been going on, you know, earlier on, Honey mentioned she she still yearns for her mother's love. Yeah. I think every child would would be you know. One that love from parents, mm-hmm. no matter what the situation is. Yeah. Even um, if I were to remember one video that I watched, this child, as young as maybe about four or five years old, the mom was stepping on him, punching him, mm. but this, but the baby still, the baby go still to hugging, the mom. hugging the mom. Mm. Masih tengah pelu, dia pukul, say, mom stop, but dia tetap hug. 
So that is naluri budak-budak. Yeah. It goes to the mum. I think like um, also a PSA to all parents mm. out there. Mm-hmm. Macam, we are getting the POV of a child going through that experience. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times it's easy to just macam, focus on what I'm struggling with, what my issue is. And sometimes we are so fixated on our own masalah mm. that we forget that we are also impacting and affecting Oh, the people children. around mm. us and like what I've been seeing from what Honey has been sharing kan um, you shared about your struggles you shared about the pain that you are going through but there is also that sense of um, need for that love for that care from mm. the parents um, and I can imagine you know there are parents out there who who might be you know moving through their family experiences in the same way mm-hmm. um, but there could be parents who are who are scared to want to make things right because what if my child cannot accept me? What if my child cannot accept all the things that I've done to her mm-hmm. um, you know, all, all of these years? But okay. seeing Hani's perspective um, helps us to realise that a child is still a child mm-hmm. and a child will always crave for that love for their parents um, mm-hmm. regardless whatever that has happened yeah. um, right. in, in, in their life. Lah. Yeah. And I also want to highlight, you know, you shared about the video again. Yeah, mm. baby to still yeah. go to the mother. Yeah. Um, you know, um, beautifully dalam Islam, there's, I I believe kita semua pernah dengar this word tawakal, tawakal. right? Tawakal. Um, tawakal. We say we rely on Allah, right? We 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 want Allah swt to help us to work mm. out our situations and make it better, yeah. right? But our scholars explain kan, yang our tawakal is similar to that when we see video tadi ya. Really? That macam um, when a child is you know being pushed away by the parent by the mom, mm-hmm. the child will still want to go back mm. to the mom mm. because they know that all they need is in the mother. Right. That is actually the lowest level of tawakal. tawakal. Oh. Yeah. Wow. The the medium level of tawakal is you rely on something because you know that you can benefit something from it and you have the choice to want to continue to benefit from the matter or otherwise. But the highest level of tawakal, interestingly, our scholars tell us, it's um, you tahu jenazah, mm-hmm. a corpse, right? Yeah. So, bila a corpse or a jenazah orang meninggal, can they do anything for themselves? Cannot. Yeah. They cannot. Who can help them? The family members. The, the family members or, or orang yang uruskan yeah. jenazah mm. tu. Okay. So, that is the highest level of reliance on Allah. Knowing that I cannot do anything, you I don't. cannot change my situation, mm. but I know that there is Allah who is doing doing His work mm. to, to 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 mend this journey for me, lah. Yeah. So um, probably you know just hearing Hani in your story all this while, again, I was just thinking about those scholarly examples, lah. Mm. How this is actually one of the manifestations of reliance upon Allah that we will continue to stumble, we will continue to be hurt in so many ways. But we still want to go back to Allah, which is why you shared. Yes. You 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 looked for all of these mm. these avenues to find peace, to find a way out. But now you are here on this journey back to Allah Subhanahu Taala, and I I think that is really really beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And also, just now I just want to chime in. The Ustazah mentioned that this is the point of view of a child who has mm. been through all this. Things right. Yeah. So maybe I want to ask Honey, if your father and your mother goes up to you, maybe we imagine it on Hari Raya, and they are the ones who went who goes up to you and apologize for all the things that they've done. Would you accept them? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I've been waiting for that. See. Inshallah. Until now. I've been yearning for that mm-hmm. Dah lama Like The inner child in me eh, yeah. Would be so happy mm-hmm. To hear that mm-hmm. That they admit mm-hmm. That they are wrong And They are guilty for that Actually in fact He did uh, Send me a long text mm-hmm. That he met, admitted That he's a shitty father But I want to hear it In person mm. Because I want to Know Like To feel the sincerity mm. Yeah huh? Hari ni banyak lagi tapi Allah mm. And also Oh Masya Allah okay And also just now touching on what uh, Ustazah cakap kan uh, The way that Through all of this Even uh, despite all of this um, Hani still managed to find her strength And macam Is trying to get 
her way back to Allah kan But Ustazah In this situation right We have heard the situation at home mm. As she is trying to get better Trying to get closer to Allah you know, Trying to istiqamah How how can she do that? Because you know the macam Hani shared The mother um, is an alcoholic The situation tu Dekat dalam rumah tu For me personally I don't see it helping her in her journey, right? So, how can she, you know, herself, uh, still istikoma and try to istikoma in her journey too? Mm. Before I answer, mm. Hani, can you share with me what has been working for you? How um, are you here today in, on, on this journey towards Allah? Uh, I have to give credits to my partner. Oh, yeah, I'm because sure. he's been helping me a lot in to rapatkan my iman and be better lah. In fact, last year he brought me to my first kia mulai. Insyaallah. Yeah. Insyaallah. Yeah. Bagus partner you. <laughs> yeah, we went there together, and I, I, I was so happy that I stood the front row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I cried so much like. Banyak ingus. Tapi terus terus esa dapat dapat the first apa ni saf pertama. Oh, so my partner has been motivating me He's been there for me And in fact he's been taking care of me uh, Instead of my parents Inshallah. Emotionally Inshallah. Mm. Temukan jodoh yang Betul you know. Macam mm. There are many ways we can think Yang Allah tak fair mm. But Allah sends you A partner <laughs> Who is so understanding And brought you to your first kiam And helped you to be here mm-hmm. So um, do you agree that A support system is really important Yes On this journey right Yes of, You need of, to of have skoma. someone mm. To support mm. you right And it's okay if the support system Is not coming From your own family You mm. need It's okay if your own support system Is not in your house But I believe that Allah SWT Is the most just lah. If the support is not coming From your house I'm sure it's coming from Outside of your house And hopefully mm. Into your house That inshallah You're going to build um, In the near future mm. lah, Inshallah If I have best do ask Amen. for you and um, I pray that it will only get better when you when you have your own um, house lah, and your own family Amin. lah, family Amin. Lah, inshallah I mean so to answer your question Sadi yes is yes point taken kerana memang susah to practice istiqamah especially when we are in an environment yang it doesn't contribute mm. to my mm. iman to my you know remembrance of Allah I have many students yang Tell me, you know, since I want to take care of my solat, but nobody in my house is solating. Mm. Right, every time solat. I'm solating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every time the kat rumah, I'm not solat. There are so many distractions or things that will bring me away mm. you know, from, from my prayer. So point taken sometimes, you know, um, it's, it's easy for people to say, oh, change your environment, you know, because mm. it will help you. Mm. But what if your environment is your own family? What yeah. if that is the only house that you can badly at the end of the day, mm. right? Yeah. Um, but what our scholars tell us is that if we cannot change the environment of our house, we can change the environment of where we put our heart at. Yes. So uh, mm. this environment can kita kita tak change people, tak change the furniture, tak change mm-hmm. everything. But where I put my heart will be a big contrib- mm. contributing factor to how I maintain my faith and maintain my iman lah. It's really yeah. true. It's really because true. that's how I uh found him lah because I really changed my lifestyle last year. Mm. Yeah, I was a totally different person. I uh didn't wear hijab back then. Mm-hmm. Uh mixed around with a lot of bad influence people and mm-hmm. did a lot of bad stuff. Uh then I don't know, tiba-tiba nak rasa macam nak pakai tudung, nak solat lagi and it happened um last year Ramadan. Eh, last year or this year? <laughs> lupa, okay, lupa. So actually, <laughs> this, year, this year, this year. Oh, my God. Inshallah. Time time looks like it was very far. But <laughs> that's the <laughs> journey, <laughs> lah, kan? Yeah. So, congratulations so, on your, your new journey with yeah. Thank you. your hijab. Uh, it takes a lot for a person to want to wear the hijab. Yes. And it takes mm. a lot to stay wearing the hijab, mm. right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, really love um, that you affirm the fact that Uh, the environment of your heart is really, really important, and mm. again, like every day we breathe oxygen, but the oxygen to our hearts is the remembrance lah of mm. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and I'm sure that is something that you yourself that experience, right? Going for mm, kiam yeah. and being in environments where it can actually fuel your heart and your soul lah. Mm. Uh, so may Allah bless your partner yes. for all the hard work <laughs> that he has been doing. <laughs> but of course, but of course, the biggest hero will always be yourself lah. Mm-hmm. We can have the best partner in the world. We call it kita tanah. 
Tak nak berubah Make that conscious choice That you know yeah. Ya Allah I, I, I want to go on On a better path Then right. um, That won't happen lah mm-hmm. But yeah. the very fact that you, are, that you are here Because of your partner But it is also Because of you lah Yes. Yeah, because of the choice. That I'm really proud of myself. Really proud of you. We are proud of you. Really proud. Yeah, Alex, can I check number two? Honey, we are proud of you, honey. Oh, oh. Okay. So, talking talking about partners, right? Mm-hmm. Inshallah, like we pray, eh, jodoh dia, and things will only get better. You know, Amin. they will support each other. Um, but I think you shared with us, right, offline, that there are some concerns that you have. Um, mm. bila nak masuk dalam alam perkahwinan ni kan. So can you share a little bit about what are those concerns? Ustazah is here also mm. to you know Shall maybe Allah. help you answer some questions. <laughs> oh, I don't think I've uh, shared this that mm-hmm. I'm anak luar nikah. Oh, right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, we wanted to share that at the start. I'll lupa kan. Minta maaf. Minta maaf. Tak apa. Yeah, so as a person yang anak luar nikah, what are the major things that can affect in our marriage life? Mm. That we have to take note in terms of Islamic law. Mashallah, mm. mm. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the most just, mm. always fair in His ways, mm-hmm. and I'm happy to share with you that nothing will affect your your your, your marriage lah. Probably mm. our concerns would be oh nanti kita nak nikah dan lepas tu nanti yeah, the, yeah. the wali and things mm-hmm. like that. Yes. So which is why in Islam we also have wali hakim, right? So mm. um the the, the, the kadi can sometimes be the wali also to allow the marriage to happen. Mm. Right. But other than that, um there is no no specific concern that you that that you need to worry about because the concept of Islam is that we are not accountable for what other people do. We are not mm. accountable for the sins of others. Even the sins of our parents, our forefathers, our ancestors, all of that, we are not accountable of. Mm. And even if you continue to say that, oh, you know, because I am uh, a child uh, uh, a child that is born out of wedlock, ataupun an illegitimate child or anak luar nikah, mm-hmm. right? But that only defines what the parents had done. Mm-hmm. But that does not define you as a person. Mm. And which is why in Islam, going into your own marriage, it does not affect anything at all. Because you are still your own person and you are not defined by what others do. You are only defined by the choices that you make um, and, and and who who you view yourself as. Lah. Mm. I would think that probably because going to marriage kind of the uh, family dynamics. Yeah. Right? So yeah. you have families from your partner's side and then you have mm. in-laws and then you have more people involved. Lah. Yeah. So I do think that that is something that you can uh, consider to talk with your partner to think about, you know, is this... A piece of knowledge that people should know, or pe- uh, or people shouldn't know. Mm. If people get to know, then what are some things that we can um, talk about or do that can be helpful for you? Mm. But mm. from like like the Islamic or the Sharia perspective, nothing is affecting your inshallah mm. marriage life because mm. Allah is the most just. You know, you you will never be accountable for the things that other people had done. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Does it give you a sense of peace now? Yeah, because the reason why I'm asking, <laughs> you know, la, like last time people have this stigma against yeah. ala, anak luar nikah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so I just have this some minor worries about mm. this. Because I think at the same time also, like what Ustazah mentioned, uh, Wali Hakim, you know, that then maybe perhaps, um, I don't know whether or not they have to, you know, like um, can the father nikahkan uh, the the son, uh, the daughter away? Mm. That kind of thing? Tak boleh. Tak boleh kan? Tak boleh. So yeah. later on when you register for your marriage yeah mm. nanti you will go through like interviews and then mm. they will ask certain things yeah so then you can disclose then uh, they have an entire system that will help yeah. you with that lah mm. so nothing to be too concerned or worry about yeah. because everything is already set in place Ustamas can help you, Ustamas. Oh, yeah, Ustamas. Ustamas. Ustamas, if you are watching. Yeah. Don't worry, kita ada contact Ustamas. Nanti, you know, we can... Yes, yes, yes. Love this episode. Yeah, MashaAllah. Also, I think there were a few questions that you wanted to ask Ustazah also. I think one of the reasons why we have also Ustazah Hidayah with us today is because when we had a Zoom meeting back then, kan, she... Oh, mesti ada sim, mesti ada nama tu. Honey, Honey, <laughs> Honey also um, voiced out certain concerns of her growing up. You know, mm. like about whether or not, um, you know, certain things are being accountable for. But I think Musaza has already shared, you know, um, certain uh, her answer just now about mm. um, we are not accountable for other people's um, to serve siapa. Mm. So maybe you want to ask that question also to uh, oh, yeah. Musaza. Selling solutions, 
not promises. Hi, I'm Ira from Sirkandi Associates. Do you know that the entire process of purchasing a HDB flat ranges from about 5 months to a year? Especially for first-time buyers who have yet to tie the knot, be sure to kickstart your journey early so that you can better manage the timeline of your transactions. To know more, contact us at srikandi.associates or call us at 8788-3559. Srikandi, selling solutions, not promises. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask... Um, because my mom works in a bar restaurant and she tends to bring back meat that is not halal and um, yeah and also her salary is also duit haram yeah so if i receive food or money from her up till now is it considered as oh can i accept it or is it haram? Hmm. Yeah. I think also the concern would be, you know, uh, mak dah bawa balik makanan, tapi kita tahu benda tu tak boleh dimakan. Tapi pasal hmm. mak kata, makan, makan, kau tak makan, siapa nak makan? Dia kata, hmm. well then, uh, how then should she react also? Maybe still, because it's still hmm. ongoing, kan? Yeah, because sometimes that's the only food that we have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Thank you so much for asking that question. I think, mm-hmm. Um, a question that probably many others out there who might be going through something similar mm-hmm. um, can also get the answer to lah. So thank you so much for asking that mm. question. Um, it goes back to the same concept macam tadi lah, right? Mm. Um, you can check out Surah Al-An'am verse 164. Everything is there. Um, but surah apa Ustaz? Surah Al-An'am. Al-An'am. The sixth chapter of the Quran. Okay. Yeah, verse 164. So, that verse tells us about we are not responsible mm-hmm. for the doings of others or the sins of others. Lah. So, it's similarly applicable to, for example, uh, your parents or your mom brings home you know, food and then uh, it comes from a sustenance or a source that is um, not uh, not halal or not permissible, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, on one part, kita pun tak boleh nak really identify if it's a 100% coming from a, an, an imper, impermissible source mm. la, or mm. a haram source, mm. right? Because um, if we lay out literally the details, it could be maybe 80%, maybe 10% is from like, you mm. know, proper dealings and mm-hmm. things like that. So um, as a child who is, for example, living in a household and then being... Um, being fat. Being, yeah, fat which I'm not... not being not not nurtured. the best, but... Being provided, uh, well, being provided, 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 like, yeah, being, yeah, being yeah. provided right, <laughs> from yes. such sources. Um, our scholars have agreed that um, we are not accountable for it. So, macam maybe your concern is so Islam ni. I I I grew up. I makan this source um, yang tak ha- yang yang tak halal and things like that, right? Uh, you are not accountable for it, and the only one that is responsible for that income and the effects of it is the one who brought it home. Mm. But not the one receiving. Because the one receiving tak ada capacity to provide mm-hmm. her own or, mm-hmm. or, or his own. So because of that incapacity, it does not make that person um, accountable lah for, mm-hmm. for all of that. So macam when you grow up, you know, you have been consuming all of these things, it does not affect you in that way because you do not have any other options. Mm. Right? And the effect is only for the one who brings it home mm-hmm. but not the one receiving. But now I believe you are a working adult, yes. right? And then you can provide on your own. You have your own job and things like that. So of course, um, providing for yourself would be the best, the best choice, right? Um, the best way out because you are clearer with what you are buying, the sources of income. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I do understand that sometimes you at rumah and then your mom brings home, brings home food, for example, brings brings something home. Um, Islam is really beautiful because when it comes to um, relationship with parents. It will always be a priority to treat our parents with kindness and respect, lah. Yeah, mm. um, not love. Interestingly, Islam does oh. not say you must love oh. your parents. Yeah, mm. it's kindness and respect because they are your parents. Mm. But Islam also recognizes that there will be scenarios where maybe parents are not fulfilling their responsibilities, mm. right? And then sometimes as children, we feel we feel bedosa because we're not loving our parents. That's so interesting. Yeah, but Islam said kindness and respect. So probably your mom brings home something and then maybe you accept it out of respect mm. because you don't want to hurt her feelings because um you know how hard she has been working yeah. um to put food on the table, for example, right? Mm. So if you are doing that out of respect, out of kindness, it's totally fine. 
it's totally okay. Mm-hmm. But of course, as as an adult right now, probably we can also have some conversations, lah, right? Like mm-hmm. maybe um, sekarang I dah besar, I think I can you know buy my own food, and nanti whenever I feel like I need you to buy food, then I will let you know, lah. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I can manage my food on my own because sekarang kan kakak dah kerja, you know that kind of thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. So probably give some alternatives, but not um not attacking her, lah. Macam mm. oh you bought you bought makanan ni, no mana boleh makan kan tak boleh kan haram this and that. Mm. Of course that person will be hurt because it's a parent kan at the end of the day. Mm. So for mm. us we we need to be a little bit a little bit more creative <laughs> in our approach. <laughs> Tapi, a little bit, a little bit more, <laughs> little bit more creative yeah. in our approach. Mm-hmm. But always have that thought lah. Um, I'm not obliged to love my parents because it could be due to the things that they had done. But mm. as a child. My obligation is to be kind and to be respectful. Mm-hmm. And if that respect is the bare minimum, it's okay because I'm just doing my job as a child. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, when I meet Allah, um, Allah will not question you why your parents like that, right? Allah will not question us why people do these things towards us. Because what we always forget is Allah knows that everything is happening. Allah knows that you are born into this family. Allah knows every single struggle that you face that people don't know. Mm-hmm. But again, Allah won't ask you, oh, why, what, um, why, why did your parent do this? Why did your parent do that? Allah will only ask you, what did you do in that situation um. when your parents had done a certain thing? Mm-hmm. And which is why it goes back to that lah, kindness and respect. It's okay mm-hmm. if I cannot love them, but the bare minimum I can do is to just respect. Sometimes respect looks like I need to walk away because I cannot engage in this conversation. Sometimes respect looks like I cannot be at home so much because when I'm at home, you know, it will trigger a lot of things and we will all be stressful and we will not be happy. It will affect my mental health, for example. Yeah. So respect for different people looks differently. But what is important is for you yourself to be clear why you are taking the choice of doing something. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Hopefully that answers in trouble. Yeah, lah. that is the answer that I've been looking for. Alhamdulillah. For a very um, long time. Yeah, but she, uh, Mahani shared also that yes. she she ever asked others lah, mm. uh, uh, but she didn't get the mm. what you have shared. Mm. I think I also very feel very enlightened. Can't decide this guy. Also, I don't know. Mashallah. Thank you, Hani, for sharing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it gives me better context. Like if mm. Hani that share your experience, and then you just come with that question, right? It mm. could be a little bit more difficult to unpack lah. Mm. But now we learn to. Uh, insiders, let's learn to empathize. Yes. Empathize people. Empathize, yeah. Masha Allah. Okay, Masha Allah, what a great session today. Wow. Mm. How do you feel, honey? Yeah, how do you feel? Well, I feel amazing. I feel like Allah. Allah really brought me here to give me the answers that I needed for ever since I'm a kid. Uh, and Masha it's a blessing to be here. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. And I believe Allah brought you here because you asked for it. In yeah. my prayers, it's always asking for it. Allah will give you. If not now, then later, inshallah. I mean, may Allah always give you so much more than you ask from Him, and anything that you have left behind, may Allah SWT not bring you back there, but instead bring you to better places, lah. I mean, inshallah. Wow! Wow! <laughs> I don't want the episode to end. <laughs> <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Right, I there you go, guys. This, this, um, of course, there are a lot of lessons that we can learn from Hani's sharing today. There's so many, mm, so so many. You know, um, she went through so many things yeah. growing up, mm. right? Still so, going, still through? going through, mm-hmm. but yet, you know, she still believes in 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 the fact that she wants to make the change for herself. Mm-hmm. Mashallah. She praise for it and mm. things like that mm. and then you know she didn't give up Betul. and she and she's been blessed yeah. with a lovely partner who guides her to our alhamdulillah alhamdulillah partner kat belakang tu kan alhamdulillah oh sorry dengar dengar yeah mashallah if allah can give you a great partner imagine the greater things that allah can give you that's right in life mashallah this only just the beginning mashallah always ask allah always ask allah yeah okay maybe um before we end this episode honey do you have anything that you want to say before we go Actually, I want to say thank you. Oh. I want to say thank you to okay. my um, primary school friends. Okay. Like, there's these two girls that has been there and know every single thing that I've been through, mm. and they're the spark to my life, lah. Oh. Um, so if they were to listen to this uh, episode, then mm. I would like to say thank you to them for bringing me joy and sunshine in my 
broken childhood life. Mm. Yeah, and um, na, I want to uh, share my love. Like I want to say thank you also to my partner for supporting oh, me throughout this journey because uh, he has been taking care of me emotionally and um, only he knows like the struggles that I've been through mm. every single thing mm-hmm. yeah. insyaAllah pun um, akan uh, menjang pelamin insyaAllah uh, in insya a few Allah. years time insyaAllah insyaAllah insya insya kita akan yang terbaik untuk Hani dan partnernya yes. and if let's say you have anything else that you know you tiba-tiba terfikir ke apa you know mm. where to find us And and thank you to outside in oh, and also yes. Azizah yes. yes. for answering my Masha question. Allah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Yes, we are more than happy that you are here today, and we are thankful that you are open to sharing your story um, for not just for us to learn, but for all of our insiders to learn as well. Inshallah. Yes, and like Ustaz mentioned just now, right? Always ask Allah. Always, yes, always ask. ask Allah. But if you want to ask for a house, then <laughs> of course. Must ask from Allah Smooth, also. Right? Smooth. Right. Yeah. Very smooth. But if you want <laughs> professional help, right? Uh-uh. Who do we look for? Sri Kandi Associates. Yes. For your property matters, you can contact Sri Kandi Associates at 8788-3559. Yes. And you can also follow them on Instagram at Sri Kandi.associates. Sri Kandi selling solutions, not, not promises. promises. <laughs> 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 do the inside do. <laughs> Yeah, we have come to the end of another episode of Outside In. And and also, uh, I forget. Thank you, Ustaz, oh, yes. for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. To this episode, Thank you me. have been <laughs> so amazing. I represent all the insiders um, yes, as, as a host today. Inshallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Ustaz. Kalau nak Ustaz apa menen, comment down below in the episode. <laughs> so, if you like what you hear, please follow us on all our socials, TikTok, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube. Share with all of your friends and family members so that they can benefit from this episode. Inshallah. Inshallah. Till next time. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.